I'm going to answer a couple of questions which were asked on our about our previous broadcast on Nazareth. And uh, I'll apologize that the video is a bit faded because I'm broadcasting in the daylight and uh, the light coming in through the windows, particularly reflecting off the new fallen snow, is uh, rather intense. Also, I um, had a, what they call a silent stroke uh, a few days ago. You might notice the last few broadcasts were a little bit of confusion and stammering. Uh, that, that's the reason I'm just recovering from um, a small stroke. So, uh, you'll bear with me, I, I trust. I was asked if the massacre of the the Holy Innocents in Bethlehem at the time of Christ's nativity had any future further prophecy. It was a fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy. And what does it mean beyond the nativity itself, that time itself? There are two things that come to mind. I don't know that it gives us a particular prophecy for the future, but one of the great things to remember is that the desire or the lust for power can lead people to extraordinarily wicked deeds. It's the, the desire for power that presents the problem. Herod was desperate to defend his power. That's why he had had, I think, three, at least three of his sons killed. Aristobulus and his wife Mariamne were actually executed. Uh, the others were just murdered. And uh, Herod was at all times trying to protect his power. There was a law among the Jews which had a rather specific purpose. You're class, classed as a Jew if your mother is a Jew. And the reason for that law was to help prevent men from marrying outside into pagan societies and bringing the paganism in to Jewish society together with the wife. So your mother was a Jew, you were a Jew. If your mother wasn't, then you weren't uh, actually a Jew. Herod's mother was Arabian, and uh, so he wasn't really technically a Jew. He was hated and outcast uh, in the minds of people, but he desired power so much that he was willing to commit any kind of outrage or slaughter in order to maintain that power. So one thing the slaughter of the Holy Innocents reveals to us is the dangers of the lust for power and that people will go to any lengths to keep power. It can be a, a source of the greatest evil. Lawful authority can come from God. Power most often comes from the devil. And this is simply a truism of, of life. If anything, though, the slaughter of the holy innocents, their gra the mass graves was found, by the way. That's why they know the number of them. When you look on the calendar, you see the number of the ones who are slaughtered. And I think 14,000 holy innocents. But it certainly echoes down to us in a time when uh, abortion is taken so lightly and even taken so much for granted. And the reasons for having uh, abortions without limits, without restrictions. Surely one thing that the massacre of the Holy Innocents in Jerusalem reflects upon is how indifferent some people can be toward life itself. How callous and coarse they can be about life and particularly the lives of others. 
and what a loss of our human our humanity itself there is in the kind of abortion laws that we have today and it's one doesn't like to moralize just to speak in terms of genuine morality the lack of reverence and respect for life as if we were indifferent to the fact that life is a gift from God, that there would be no life without God's will. And to take that gift and misuse it because it might inconvenience us to have a child, the child might have a what we call a defect or something and we would have to uh, raise a child with a defect. That's the way the massacre of the Holy Innocents really reflects down to our own time. In revealing to us the loss for the true reverence and respect for life in our own era. And if anything, when that day should be celebrated here in the monastery on the Feast of the Holy Innocents of Bethlehem, we serve a general service of remembrance for the victims of abortion because they also are among the Holy Innocents. And killed, not as Herod did, to protect his personal power, but killed in a way to satisfy our selfishness and our material desires. To have abortion available without any restrictions, without any boundaries, without saying only in a certain severe or unusual case it's lawful, is really a general lack of reverence and disrespect for life itself. And that's what we should learn from that feast. And all of you watching this video, I would like to ask those of you who are priests and lay people, try to establish in your own parish, on this feast of the Holy Innocents of Bethlehem, a prayer of commemoration for all the victims of abortion as being amongst the Holy Innocents who have been slain because of a lack of love and reverence for life itself and an acknowledgement that life truly is a gift of God. And someone will say, well, a child might have a defect of some kind, so we could abort the fetus. Oh heavens, we don't want the neighbors to think we could have a child with a defect. It would injure our pride. What about the defects you have? Every one of us, I can look in the mirror every morning and start listing my own defects. And uh, so I have these defects. Does that mean I should, you know, commit suicide or something? Or wish that my mother had aborted me because I have defects? Every one of us has some kind of defects. Raising a child with a visible defect might help us to penetrate our own soul and come to grips with our unseen defects within us, our spiritual defects, our moral defects, our defects, defectiveness in love, our defectiveness in forgiveness, our defectiveness in the willing to, to make reconciliation, all these things, they're all defects. So what are we doing alive if we want to abort a child because they have a defect? Uh, anyway, I call upon all of you just from my heart asking that at least this year on the Feast of the Holy Innocents of Bethlehem. Call to mind and say a prayer for all the Holy Innocents who have been victims of abortion and try to establish it even as a regular event in your parish.